Has a client ever questioned the accuracy of your drone maps, even when you thought everything was perfect? It's a sinking feeling, and nine times out of ten, it's not the drone's fault, it's the RTK setup. After years of real-world jobs, I have proven a system that logs in perfect accuracy every single time. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to copy my RTK setup so you can deliver results no one can argue with. DJI drones like the Mavi 3 Enterprise or M350 comes with RTK modules and they are powerful. But RTK only works if your drone has something to connect to. And that's where the Emily Reach RS3 comes in. Using a base station like the RS3 lets your drone connect to its position in real time bringing your horizontal and vertical arrows down to centimeters. We are talking about survey grade accuracy and depending on your project, fewer GCPs needed. Without a solid base station, you are stuck relying on GNSS corrections over course networks located miles away. Bottom line, a base station gives you better accuracy, better consistency and more control over your results. And if your internet is spotty or you're miles away from the nearest space station, your accuracy can draw fast. If you want to find out more, I made a video about this issue and I will leave the link in the description. But just having a base is not enough. You have to set it up right. Let's talk about how to lock down your base point right away so you can actually trust your data. If it's a returning site, means you will go on that site on multiple visits it's a good idea to leave a more permanent uh, marker like a peg or a nail so in this way you're gonna set your base in the same position every single time regarding surveying your base station point you have two ways to do this option one is rtk through course connect your rs3 to a local course network is important to survey the base point at different times of the day because satellite positions or satellite geometry changes Pro tip, rotate your GNSS receiver about 120 degrees between measurements. This average out small antenna errors and gives a more reliable position. Take multiple RTK readings, then drop them into a cell spreadsheet to spot and cut out any spikes. Average the good measurements and that's your final base point. Option 2, PPP or post-processing positioning. Log raw GNSS data from your RS3, upload it to a PPP service to get a highly accurate coordinate. I made a full video showing how to do PPP step by step using MLID Reach RS3 and I will link it at the end if you want to dive deeper. With the base set, the next step is connecting it to the drone. Let's start with the fastest method the direct connection over Wi-Fi. First thing we switch the correction input off because we already survey accurately the base point and we don't want any interference from the course network. Second thing we do is to go to the a base output menu and select local entry. Press information and copy all the details so you can copy them back into DJI Pilot 2. Now it's time to set the base point coordinates. We will go to the base settings. We choose the coordinates entry method as manual, press configure and choose from the project. After you survey the base point and make all the calculation through RTK averaging or post-processing positioning, you will input the calculated base point coordinates into Emily Flow. Now you will select your base point, which is in my case, uh, to keep things simple, is called base and is the only point in that new job. Press apply, measure your antenna height and add it to the settings. Now all is left to do is to connect your DJI pilot to up to the MLID Wi-Fi to add your local entry details and you are good to fly. Second method is by using MLID Caster. This is my go-to method when I have a mobile signal or a portable router on site. Also, it's great if you want to have multiple RTK receivers on site connected to the same base station, like someone is flying an RTK drone or another person surveys GCPs by using another GNSS rover. You can connect up to 
10 receivers to the same base station by using emly caster what do you need to do first is to go to caster.emly.com log in and copy the credentials of the base and the rover in the emly flow you will add the mount point credentials and in the dji pilot 2 copy the rover credentials the base setting steps are the same as in the previous method disconnect your course and set up your manual base point. If you want to take it even further uh, and lock down your base even more accurate using PPP, check out this video. The link is right here.